In my last video, I demonstrated how to play 3DS games on newer hardware without the need for ROMs. Now, let's take it a step further. Right now, this Aya Neo Flip DS that you see on the screen is playing Mario Kart 7 at full speed without emulation. While the game is being controlled directly by the handheld's built-in gamepad, the game itself is running directly on my new 3DS XL using a 3DS Remote Play feature that's been around for quite some time. It's a really nifty setup for anyone wanting to play their favorite 3DS games on newer hardware without wading into the legal gray waters of emulation. But it's not without its drawbacks. In this video, let's go over how to set up Remote Play on a 3DS, why you might want to use it, and why the software still may not be ready for your next playthrough of Ultra Moon. For some additional context, there have almost always been ways for folks to get what's on a 3DS's displays onto a much larger display. Pricey hardware-based capture cards showed up shortly after the 3DS's launch, while software-based solutions popped up only a couple years after. Boot NTR, the software I'm using here, has its version 2.0 release dated back to 2016 on GitHub, while the latest fork release was released just last year. While running custom firmware on a 3DS, Boot NTR installs like any other app and pops up on the home menu for whenever it's needed. Similar to remote desktop or video capture programs on more versatile computers, streaming from a 3DS means launching Boot NTR to broadcast the 3DS's displays over Wi-Fi and then opening another app on a separate computer to retrieve that signal. On Windows, that means running an app called Snickerstream. Snickerstream is a fairly straightforward app. Then just ask for your 3DS's IP address, whether you want to prioritize quality or performance, and how you want your two stream displays set up. There are a ton more options, but even the app's creators recommend not fussing around unless you know exactly what you're doing, which I definitely don't. Nonetheless, it's all incredibly easy to get up and running and start streaming 3DS games. The one real downside is that I can't seem to resize the Snickerstream windows at all. They're always the same size and resolution regardless of settings, which, well, doesn't look great even on the 7-inch 1080p display of my Flip DS. I've gone around it personally by using either OBS or Borderless Gaming, depending on my use case, to make the windows full screen. It doesn't take up a ton of effort uh, to set up, but it is my first annoyance with this software. Of course, the moment you try this for yourself and hit connect, you'll notice two other annoyances. The first is that the 3DS's audio isn't streamed with the gameplay. My 3DS is typically close enough to me while streaming that it doesn't really matter too much, but wired headphones or a splitter and aux cable might be necessary for anyone wanting to listen to and stream gameplay at the same time. The second annoyance is that this streaming is unidirectional. With Snickerstream alone, no information from my Flip DS is communicated back to my 3DS. That's perfectly fine if I'm just looking to cast my 3DS to a much larger display, but it's problematic if I want to display and control the gameplay with the same device. To fix this issue, you'll need to activate input redirection on your 3DS. As long as you're using the latest version of Luma 3DS, which you really should be at this point, this should be as easy as pressing left shoulder, down, and select at the same time on your home menu, selecting miscellaneous options, and then enabling input redirection. It's built in at this point. You'll then need to download the Windows client to take the controls registered by your other device and stream them back to your 3DS. It's all a bit janky, to be honest, but it works well the majority of the time. The built-in controls of my Flip DS even registered as gamepads without needing any extra setup. When everything's connected, the only thing that really communicates that I'm not playing locally on my Flip DS is the lower resolution and occasional drop in performance between the top and bottom displays. Honestly, if nothing else, 
this is all just kind of a weird, fun project to get up and running that I think anyone who enjoys tinkering will appreciate. All potential jank aside. As with any other streaming solution, you'll be giving up some of the 3DS's native features for sure, like 3D, seamless motion controls, and easy use of the cameras. But it might be worth it for anyone who's had an itch to play their game on modern hardware without using Citra. Unlike streaming Arctic Base, performance is also seemingly even across games, since I'm literally just mirroring my 3DS's displays. So there should be no slowdown due to compatibility issues while playing 3DS games, outside any hitches related to internet connection. But still, I would be lying if I said all of this was a smooth experience. I've experienced more than a few stability issues during my testing. Given that 3DSs weren't meant to function this way, it seems like streaming two separate connections at once might be a bit much for this compact console. On multiple occasions, I've had the stream crash or controller input stop responding, both of which have resulted in my 3DS becoming unresponsive and needing to be restarted. It's made me wary enough that I'd recommend going into a setup like this with caution if you're planning to use a 3DS that has sentimental value or you can't easily replace. I don't think streaming is going to break my 3DS or anything, but crashing really can't be healthy for its longevity. And then uh, there's also the touchscreen factor. As far as I can tell, there's no good way to both stream gameplay full screen on a dual screen setup and input touchscreen controls. Like I said before, Snickerstream doesn't return any controller inputs, and the input redirection Windows client only has a tiny extra window that allows for broad touch input, which also isn't visible if I want the touchscreen's gameplay to be full screen. That touchscreen hurdle alone really only makes playing games feasible if they don't use the bottom screen for core gameplay features. There are quite a few of those, including Super Smash Bros., Mario Kart 7, or the mainline Pokemon games, if you ignore the minigames. But it's still a bit of a hassle, and does limit the practical library of games available for remote play. All of this is also in the context of me using my new 3DS Excel. If you're stuck with one of the original 3DS or 2DS systems, Streaming performance is likely to be worse overall, due to them being a smidge less performant than the new line of systems. But honestly, don't let any of this dissuade you from using these pieces of streaming tech. While I've found using both at the same time to need some additional polish and hit some general rough patches along the way, using boot NTR and input redirection separately has been fantastic. Especially if you're a streamer or video creator here on YouTube who just needs a low-cost way to get what's on your 3DS to a program like OBS, Boot NTR rocks. Even the issue of it being stuck at a lower resolution mostly goes away if the streamed screens are pushed off to the side and made smaller on your display. Meanwhile, input redirection is bound to be a godsend for anyone whose 3DS controls have broken or become almost useless. Being able to bring in an external controller seems like a great way to comfortably make final backups to a system before jumping into repairs. Likewise, being able to play a platformer like Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D with much more comfortable controls might be exactly what some folks are looking for to get the most out of their original hardware. Nonetheless, while full-fledged remote play on a 3DS might never be as good as remote play on more modern consoles, I still give it extra points for just being fun. It's always interesting to make use of old game consoles in new ways. While it's not going to replace either emulation or playing on original hardware as my go-to way to play 3DS games, it's easy to recommend as a fun diversion for anyone interested in an afternoon project that might give them additional ideas in ways that they can use these software features even more creatively. Plus, going through all of this gave me a great introduction to boot NTR and input redirection, tools which I'm no doubt going to make good use of as I continue working on my 3DS retrospective.
they're extremely nifty tools to have just in my back pocket. And experiencing them for the first time within a remote play setup has been well worth all the hassle. Those are my thoughts though. I'd love to know yours. Are you someone who can make use of 3DS remote play? Or are you someone who's tinkered with similar setups in the past and have thoughts or tips you'd like to share with everyone? Let me know down in the comments. As always, if you found this video interesting or informative, go ahead and give it a like to let me know. And then be sure to get subscribed for more dual screen gaming videos in the near future. Setup guides for everything mentioned in this video will be linked down in the video description. I'll also leave links to tools to back up your 3DS's save files in case you haven't done that recently. You really should, because in general, anytime you're planning to use your 3DS in unexpected ways, it tends to be a good idea to back up your games and saves, just in case something weird happens. Anyway, that's going to be all for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. Until next time, catch you later.